Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. Today on the newscast, is President Trump considering a military strike against Iran's nuclear facilities? Some reports are suggesting that. We'll break it down today. Plus, a very special Watchman newscast Christmas offer that you will not want to miss. Stick around. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. As I come to you on Thursday, November 19th, the United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is on the ground in Israel, and so far it has been a very eventful trip. Number one, he paid a visit to one of our very favorite places in Israel, the City of David, ancient Jerusalem, where he was guided by our good friend Zev Orenstein, who you've seen many times here on the Watchman newscast and, of course, on the Watchman TV show on TBN. From there, Secretary Pompeo moved on to Sagot Winery in the hills outside of Jerusalem, another amazing place that you have seen on the Watchman TV show. And lastly, and most importantly, in my view, he set his feet upon the Golan Heights. Now, it is the strategic area uh, in Israel that borders Syria, and Secretary Pompeo became the very first United States Secretary of State to visit the Golan Heights today. And while there, he declared that, yes, this is sovereign Israeli territory. He echoed what President Trump said back in March 2019 when he also declared that the Golan Heights belongs to Israel, case closed. And folks, that is so strategic because, as you know, if you watch The Watchmen on a regular basis, the Golan is kind of the flashpoint for Israel's conflict to the north where the Iranian regime and Hezbollah are trying to establish a foothold on the Golan, on Israel's border, as a beachhead from which they can strike Israel. Israel says no way. As a matter of fact, just yesterday on a very special Watchman newscast, check it out in our archives here on YouTube, we talked about Israel's uh, airstrikes early Wednesday morning, November 18th, against Iranian and Syrian targets inside Syria, and it was all about the Golan Heights, the Iranian regime, uh, their proxies planted bombs along that Israel-Syria border that were intended to murder and maim Israeli soldiers. Israel uncovered these bombs, thankfully, and struck back very, very hard. So if you haven't heard about that yet, the mainstream media kind of paid it scant attention and moved on rather quickly. If you haven't heard about that yet, check out our newscast from yesterday, Wednesday, November 18th. And while you are at it, Subscribe. Please subscribe to the Watchman News channel. Click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Hey, before we get into all of this talk of a possible U.S. strike against Iran's nuclear weapons facilities, I wanted to mention also that you should stay tuned until the very end of the Watchman Newscast today. We have a very special Watchman newscast Christmas offer that you will not want to miss. Some very good stuff, folks, that I want you to take advantage of. Very good. So stay tuned for that at the end. Okay, let's get into it. We have reports in the international media that President Trump recently met with his top advisors and cabinet members and discussed options for possibly striking Iran's nuclear facilities, in particular that Natanz facility. We just talked about it on a newscast last week. Again, check it out in our archives here on YouTube. Natanz is a major problem. It was severely damaged over the summertime in an act of sabotage. Some people are pointing the finger at Israel and saying Israel was behind it. Who knows? No one claimed responsibility. But Natanz was a place and is a place where the Iranian regime is enriching uranium at a rapid pace on their way to acquiring a nuclear bomb. So Natanz is apparently back online now in a major way after that uh, shutdown over the summer due to that explosion there. Now, and this is the IAEA, the UN's, the UN's of all people, their atomic energy watchdog, their nuclear watchdog said last week, that the Iranian regime is enriching uranium at 12 times the amount that is permitted under the Iran nuclear deal, which was signed back in the summer of 2015, and which, thankfully, President Trump pulled out of. So, obviously, the leader of the free world, the President of the United States, hears these reports from a very credible source, the IAEA, and says, wow, 
Should we do something about this? They are, the Iranian regime, is in clear violation of the Iran nuclear deal. Now, even though the United States thankfully pulled out of that disastrous deal, uh, Germany, France, Britain, Russia, and China remain in it, and they are desperately trying to salvage it, even though the Iranian regime has made clear they are not going to follow the letter of that deal. They, they've made clear they've broken it time and time again. These reports about enriching 12 times the amount of uranium that is permitted under the nuclear deal are just the latest in a long line of reports, and it's no coincidence that we saw this series of explosions against Iran's nuclear, nuclear facilities and missile facilities over the summertime, folks, because they are marching ahead. The Iranian regime's intent is to possess the world's deadliest weapons. They want the bomb. Hello, reality check for anyone who doubts or for anyone who thinks that it's just for peaceful purposes. I'm talking about the Iranian regime's nuclear programs. It's pretty clear what they want to do. And according to various nuclear watchdogs, Iran's breakout time towards the bomb, if they so choose, is pretty short. Perhaps just a few months uh, for Iran to acquire the bomb. That's a big deal. But folks, every U.S. president has said that. Even Democrats have said all options are on the table when it comes to Iran's nuclear facilities. We will not let Iran acquire the bomb. Now, when some say it, I don't quite believe them. But when President Trump says it, based on his track record in confronting Iran, I believe what he says. I don't think on his watch he's going to allow the Iranian regime to acquire nuclear weapons. It's not going to happen. We look to the takeout of Qasem Soleimani earlier this year, the Iranian arch terrorist. We look to uh, the Trump administration severely sanctioning the Iranian regime, just announced today even more sanctions against Iran, including targeting Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. Also, we can look to the Trump administration designated, designating Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps as a terrorist organization, a specially designated terrorist organization, and rightly so, and just keeping the pressure on and supporting Israel in every way in its fight against Iran's attempts to wipe the Jewish state off the map, both directly and through its proxies like Hezbollah, Hamas, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Through it all, President Trump has stood strong against the Iranian regime. It's been refreshing for me to see, folks, the past 41 years, many times, uh, Iran has gotten off scot-free as it's engaged in terror around the world, including against U.S. interests. Finally, we have a leader who is standing up to the Iranian regime and saying no more. So, I don't believe that President Trump would allow Iran to go nuclear. I think that's a non-starter. But I would find it very unlikely if President Trump uh, leaves office in the next two months that a strike will happen in that period unless there is really uh, an imminent uh, prospect of severe danger to the United States posed by Iran. Now, I said imminent, folks. Key word there. A nuclear Iran, okay, maybe it's not imminent, maybe not in the next two months, but say Iran a year or two years from now breaks out and acquires the bomb. Then it becomes very imminent. Listen, the Iranian regime doesn't want to acquire the bomb just for show. Folks, their radical ideology demands that they will use it. Number one, Israel, the little Satan in their view, is the prime target in their neighborhood. But number two, remember, Iran considers the United States as the great Satan and the ultimate prize in their radical worldview. And if you're in America and you're saying, okay, if they get the bomb, they're thousands of miles away in the Middle East. It doesn't affect me. Guess what? Our own Pentagon here in the United States has released reports over the past few years saying that the Iranian regime, which already has the largest ballistic missile stockpile in the entire Middle East, is trying to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. Folks, they do exactly what their name says. They're designed to travel across continents, across oceans. Those missiles, those ICBMs that the Iranian regime would like to acquire, they're not for Israel. They're not for Saudi Arabia. They're not even for Europe. They are for the great Satan, the United States. You only develop ICBMs for one reason and one reason only, and that's to mount them with a nuclear warhead. As we've said, Iran is not far from acquiring the bomb, and if they have the ICBMs that they could mount that bomb on, guess what, America? That becomes a very imminent and realistic threat. So again, no surprise that President Trump sees these developments at the Natanz nuclear facility in Iran, and he gets very alarmed, and he's saying, hey, well, what if 
or if this becomes really imminent, what are our options? I think that's a very responsible thing for an American president to do. And I think he's doing the right thing there to at least consider the options. Secondly, an Iran, a nuclear Iran, another nightmare scenario for the United States, which would profoundly affect the entire world. A top Saudi official said just yesterday that, you know what, if Iran acquires the bomb, we're going to get the bomb too. And other nations in the region will as well, he said. That's a top Saudi official. So what you will have, folks, is a nuclear arms race in the world's most chaotic, most volatile region, the Middle East. I don't think anyone watching wants that. So it's good that President Trump has stood strong against Iran's nuclear facilities. It's very good. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel, I do not believe under any circumstances that he will allow Iran to acquire the bomb either. I think any Israeli Prime Minister would be obviously dead set against that and take action to prevent that. So, very interesting developments here. I think the most interesting thing for me was the reaction uh, from the mainstream media that, hey, President Trump's a cowboy. How dare he even consider this? He's trying to set the world on fire in his final potential final two months of office. Uh, but to me, as the leader of the free world, as the president of the United States, whose main charge in this country is our national security, I think he was completely being responsible and appropriate to say, wow, okay, Iran marching towards the bomb again, enriching huge amounts of uranium at Natanz. Say this progresses, folks. What are our options? That's what he asked his closest advisors. And folks, I can guarantee similar conversations have gone on in every U.S. administration, Republican or Democrat, over the past 20 years at least, and also in the capitals of Europe. So just, it's a bit annoying how the media frame this. But here's the good news. God Almighty sits on the throne. He is in charge of all of these events. He neither slumbers nor sleeps when it comes to his land and his people, Israel. He has his hand on the United States. I firmly believe he has had his hand on this nation from our very inception, and I pray that he continues to as we travel through these rough waters right now in America and around the world. Take heart because Christmas is coming when we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, I told you we had a special offer. Stick around for the good stuff. Hey, I know the Iran issue and nuclear weapons kind of doom and gloom, but hey, I think you'd rather know than not know what's happening in the world's most strategic region, the Middle East, and how it affects you no matter where you live. The Bible says, God says through the prophet Amos, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You can't say you don't have the knowledge after you watch the Watchman newscast. That's why we're here. We're not going to sugarcoat it for you. This is no time to mince words. So we hope you appreciate it. We surely appreciate you tuning in. And as a token of our appreciation, we have a very special, here we go, Watchman Christmas offer for you, our good friends at Artsa. Remember we had the Artsa Nazareth box we offered in September and October exclusively right here on the Watchman Newscast. Well, this one's really exciting, folks. We'll do a Watchman unboxing today for the brand new Artsa Bethlehem box just in time for Christmas. The Watchman discount. It was 15% for the Nazareth box. Guess what? Christmas gift, an 18% discount off all Arts of Boxes. As you can see, it's about the size of a shoe box, but man, it is chock full of goodies inside straight from Israel, made by Israeli artisans and shop owners and small business owners, Arts of Products. So we are going to do an unboxing. This is kind of fun, right? We're talking about the heavy stuff with Iran, but we're ending on a more fun note because it is the Christmas season. It's upon us nearly. And in this Arts of Box, we have on top, very nice, kind of just a list, uh, a sheet for each product, describing each product in the box, and also some background info on Bethlehem. This is really cool, really nice. You got some Hebrew there. You have the city of Christ's birth, the city of Bethlehem. These are products straight from Bethlehem. Again, folks, made by Israeli artisans and Israeli small business owners. I don't want to talk too much because I want to show you what's inside the box. Number one, we have some tastes from Israel. Oh, that's a candle. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is kind of a hip product now. My daughter likes it, my 14-year-old. Almond butter. This is halva almond butter made in the Holy Land, made in Israel. Now, look, if you're watching right now, 
you may have never been to Israel. It could be your lifelong dream on your bucket list to go to the Holy Land, to go to Israel. But maybe you just haven't been there, or you went once, or you couldn't get back, or you're like me, you go all the time, you're blessed enough to go to God's land all the time, but because of COVID, I haven't been able to go in nearly a year back to Israel and get on the ground. This is as close as you will get to a taste, the sights, the smells of the Holy Land, these arts of boxes. So here's almond butter made in Israel. And by the way, at the Watchman Newscast, we don't partner with an organization unless it's fulfilling that biblical mandate to bless Israel and the Jewish people. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. When you're blessing Israeli businesses, small business owners, uh, artisans in Israel right now, especially during COVID when the Israeli economy has taken a major hit, folks, you are fulfilling the biblical mandate to bless Israel. You're also blessing the body of Christ in Israel. We have some dark chocolate and peppermint, great for Christmas, obviously, the peppermint. Also some toffee, all made in Israel. A taste of the Holy Land, so cool. We also have a candle. Now this, my wife loves this, and my daughter's actually. A candle made in Bethlehem, and it kind of makes me sad because I smelled it. I did, my daughter and I did the unboxing before I came on camera with you. Ah, and it reminds me of Israel. It reminds me of the Different places I go in Israel, it smells like Israel, it smells like Bethlehem, like Jerusalem, this is great. The Bethlehem candle. So we have the food, we have the really great food made in Israel. We also have, this I love, now this is a true, not a taste, but kind of uh, a symbol of Bethlehem, I would say, especially the Christians in Bethlehem. These are hand-carved olive wood Christmas ornaments that come in the arts of box. Really cool stuff. You see, oh, I'm sorry, it's upside down. You see the manger scene? We actually, our family have, the Stackelbeck family, we have a a large manger hand-carved out of olive wood, Bethlehem olive wood, under our tree every Christmas. But you have these ornaments. These were hand-carved by Christians in Bethlehem. This is one of the big uh, avenues of industry among the Arab Christian population in Bethlehem, these hand-carved olive wood carvings, especially at Christmas time. So just a real boost to the economy there at a time when they're really struggling. Also, man, this doesn't end. These Arts of Boxes are incredible. Not only do they come in pristine condition, mint condition, not a mark on them, which I don't know how they do it. Nate and Itai, the entire team at Artsa, thank you. As always, they do great stuff. It's great working with them. Uh, but these are like bottomless these arts of boxes. I, I, I opened it with my daughter. I said, wow, there's more? So that's exciting. And it's a great deal as you learn as you will learn in a second. Uh, an Israeli game, Tables That Talk. This is a game you can play with your family around the table at Christmas time. And we also have, I told you this doesn't end, postcards of Israel. 20 postcards of Israel made in Israel from the photo house. Uh, it's an archive shop that has over 1 million images that document Israel's history. Tell me this isn't the perfect gift, these arts of boxes for family members of yours who love Israel and have never been to Israel or have been once and are dying to get back. This is the perfect gift, especially if you've never been to the land, I have to say. This is getting you very close and you're blessing Israel. It, it, it's, it's a perfect storm in a good way. Okay, now these are my two favorites as we wrap up. Two more products. Coasters. You're having coffee, you're having tea with your family members at Christmas and at Hanukkah, by the way. This is perfectly fitting for Hanukkah as well, most of it at least. But I'm thinking Christmas, I celebrate Christmas, although I love my Jewish friends and the the holiday of Hanukkah, and I love the Maccabees. Um, These coasters and uh, for your tea, for your coffee, are perfect. Look, with images from Israel, of Bethlehem, of Jerusalem, and again, handmade in Israel, handcrafted in Israel, doesn't get much better than that, folks, if you love Israel. Lastly, my favorite, I don't want the box to fall. I have it on a stool there. Check this out. Handmade in Israel, this beautiful plate. It's a decorative, decorative plate uh, with the city of Bethlehem on it, the city of Christ's birth. Wow. So that is your arts of box for November, December. Bethlehem. Now, I told you, Artsa is a seasonal, uh, the boxes go out seasonally. Now, we had Nazareth in the fall and the summer. 
We have Bethlehem in the wintertime at Christmas time. Perfect timing, obviously, the place of Christ's birth around Christmas. We'll have a box from Jerusalem in the spring and I believe Galilee in the summer. So a lot of good stuff coming from Artsa. It is a subscription service. So you subscribe and you get one of the Artsa boxes every season straight from the Holy Land, from Israeli artisans, from Israeli small businesses and shops that are hand making these products and they're delivered to your doorstep by Artsa, and it's a great deal. Go to artsabox.com. That's artsabox.com, and use the discount code WATCHMAN18. 18% off your Artsa Box subscription. You can get the standard box or a premium box, which is, wow, the tops, but artsabox.com, and please, please use that discount code WATCHMAN18. Merry Christmas from the entire Watchmen newscast team, from the Arts of Box team as well. Folks, great stuff. As you can see, a lot of 